Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is the Pirate Republic Africa Gambit by Green Feet Games. This is a one to five player pirating adventure for ages 13 and up and it takes roughly an hour to about three hours to play. It's a big game, it's a sandbox game. And in the game, the Pirate Republic, you are gonna be playing as one of the famous pirates from history, whether it be Calico Jack or Mary Reed or one of many others like Blackbeard. Gather your player board, set up the main game board, and begin your adventure with the campaign mode or single shot mode, where you'll go around battling against battalions, defeating forts and ports, as well as completing missions and objectives, up to the point where one of two things happens. Either you go all the way around the board for victory points, at 120 the game will end, or if you can complete at least one personal mission and the main campaign mission, the game will end, and whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. We'll talk about the setup and how to play the game, then we'll cover my review. You guys ready? Let's talk about it. To begin setup for the game, the Pirate Republic, the first thing you do is you take the main game board out and place it within reach of all players. This is a big game board, so make sure that you have a large table space in order to do it. Then, you're gonna take all of the main forts. These are the double-sided forts with the flags of the different countries, like Poland, and Britain and so on and so forth and place them down on the spaces in the square locations marked on the map. From there, you're also going to take the Tidings deck. It's a deck that is a large tarot sized card deck. Shuffle this up and place this on the Tidings space. You're also going to go ahead and take one of the campaign missions. You can choose to either go from one and progress from there or simply choose any of them and play out that campaign. Now that campaign is gonna give you full, more extra additional setup instructions. They might tell you to put treasure galleons on a location or objective markers in a certain area, as well as where you can place your starting characters. In this case here, it's gonna be Nassau. Uh, you're also gonna be then taking tokens. These tokens represent the different ships in the, in the game, whether it be merchants or pirates or treasure galleons, and you'll be placing them in stacks on the enemies of the Pirate Republic location. The Navy is gonna go in the top right, followed by the Pirate Hunters, then the treasure galleons, and finally you're going to get the Slavers, as well as one Pirate Hunter underneath there. And it's kind of organized and it tells you where they go. And this board is gonna be tracking the deaths of a lot of the different ships in the game. After you've done that, you've placed out your main ships, you've placed out all the markers, as well as anything that the campaign has said, you're then going to go ahead and add objectives. These are little objective markers, they're called level rewards. You'll shuffle them up and place them down. However, there is a first and like starting uh, way you can play for your first game that's recommended to you, but otherwise you'll mix them up and place them. Then you're also gonna take a marker, one of your pirate's markers for each of the characters in the game and place it on zero for your victory point tracker. It's the top left-hand side of the game board. Afterwards, you'll take the decks. The first deck is the crew deck. This deck has all of the blue flags in the top right-hand corner. You'll shuffle these up and you'll deal three out next to the game board. Then you're gonna take the elite deck and it's the same thing. You're gonna be doing the exact same thing, but this is the red pirate skull with the crown and you'll shuffle that up and deal three as well. Additionally, you'll take one pirate that you're not playing with. You'll shuffle up their deck and this will be the captain's deck and you'll place it face down, but you won't draw any cards and reveal them. Set aside the treasure cards, personal missions, and all the tokens, whether it be infamy tokens or whether it be or like these, uh, these reputation tokens, the damage tokens, and any of the pirate ship tokens like slavers, treasure galleons, and pirate hunters and place them next to the game board. The game will also ask you to create two bags. The bags are gonna be lands for forts and ports, all the additional forts and ports that are not the ones on the board, as well as a bag full of like merchant ships and pirates, as well as some of the navy that are gonna be in the other bag. And these are bags that are gonna draw you random allocated boats and things that are gonna hit the board at certain occasions. Each player is also gonna choose a character board. I have Mary Reed and Calico Jack here. Each of these characters is gonna have their own 12 card character deck. You'll shuffle that up and place it on the pirate deck location. You're also gonna get a number of the tokens here for your pirate. The pirate's tokens are gonna be based on the symbol on the specific player board, in which you're gonna allocate them, four of them, on your game board. Ship, crew, and command will start at zero, and movement will start at three. The rest of them you can place on your board, along with one reputation token. Designate one player to have the first player marker, give each player 12 black cubes for their accomplishments, and then deal out two personal missions for each player. They'll pick one of them and discard the other and start with one personal mission in the game. 
After that, simply take this die, hand it to the first player, and it's time to begin the Pirate Republic. Okay, so to begin playing the Pirate Republic, the first thing we're gonna do is check the reference card. This is the way we're gonna learn the turns and phases of the game. The back of it is a reference for all the uh, specific types of icons. And the first thing we'll do is the player who has the first player marker, the gold marker, is gonna start by doing the tidings phase. Every player is gonna draw four cards from their deck, or basically your hand size, and then they're going to have the main player, first player, draw a Tidings card. Now, as opposed to what we did before, which is spawning units, which whenever you spawn, you'll draw a Tidings card and use the map portion, and uh, this time we're going to be using the written portion above the map. In this case, it says that all enemy tokens gain plus one close quarters attack this round, and you cannot scout land tokens. And this will remain in effect for the full round, and I'll explain how a round ends in a bit. Additionally, the top portion of these cards is actually going to be a flag, and that flag is a letter of marquee, which means that these specific units will not fight you intentionally. They'll turn neutral for this specific round, and that depends on the flag on the appropriate tidings card. We'll leave this tidings card face up for the round. It's a way to notify you whenever, uh, at the beginning of the round, it'll notify you what the round has to offer for you and what is not going to fight you. After you've done that, then you're going to go ahead and do any NPC actions. NPC actions are mainly used in the scenarios slash your campaign mission. Any NPC tokens will move a number of spaces based on the scenario. If you're not playing that, you can simply skip this, and it's specific to the different types of campaigns in the game. You're going to go to the action phase next, and the player who starts, the player who has the marker, is the player who will begin. They have their four cards in hand, and they can go ahead and start by rolling this die here. This is the tidings die, and you will roll it and do the effect. The effects are as follows. One, two, three, or negative one movement, and you'll actually increase your movement from three to whatever that addition is. You can also have to, unfortunately, take a pirate and or merchant and place it on your space, from the bag, or you'll be forced, or a pirate, or even a naval ship, or you'll even, and you can choose to run away with the white one. And the red one, you actually have to fight. The last thing is the treasure marker, which is going to give you um, a, a benefit as well. But basically, how that works is if you don't have any slaver ships and any treasure galleons, you'll spawn them on their starting locations. And if you do have them, you will move them along their tracks. You'll take the marker, you will place it down on the starting area and then anyone that currently exists will simply move on the track here. If they ever get to the end, you'll remove them. Whenever you don't have one, you'll spawn another whenever you roll this die symbol. Okay, so you've rolled the die. I got a three, so I'll move my three to a six movement, and that's the currency for movement I'll have for the turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by taking actions. There are a number of actions in the game, and each action that you utilize is gonna cost you something. It could cost you movement, it could cost you a certain type of combat, um, and you can also use the certain actions on the cards, such as drawing and discarding cards from your hand to gain other effects. But the actions are as follows. Combat, move, scout, boast, establish a pirate haven, rest, and declare infamy. Combat pretty much works the same way, no matter what it is you're fighting, but when you attack a land or a ship token, you're going to initiate combat. And the first thing you do always is check initiative. You will check your pirate level, which is based on this uh, basically v uh, victory point tracker here, and eight gives you level two, and 30, uh, 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 38 points will give you level four, and so, so on and so forth. And basically what your level is will determine what your initiative is. At level two, you'll have initiative over merchants. At level three, you'll have initiative over ports. At level four, you'll have initiative over pirates, and it goes on and on from there. And of course, when you level up, you'll gain other benefits, which I'll talk about in a second here. But Fighting, that's all I want to talk about right now. When you initiate combat, if you have initiative, you'll choose one of the three fighting stats, and if you have higher than your opponents, you will best them. When you best them, you'll take the marker, you will gain the benefits, and do any effects, like flipping over any of your personal objectives if you've completed them. If it's a ship, you're just going to put it back into the bag or back onto the enemies of the Republic, depending on what type of ship it is and you'll gain the benefits. If it is a land marker area, you'll actually be able to defeat that marker and take one of your pirate tokens and place it on that flag here. 
and you're also getting the benefits of whatever it is. If it's a land marker, you're going to draw from the land bag as opposed to fighting one of the ships on the game board here. Place it down, and it could be a fort or a port, which will determine what your initiative is going to be anyway. And then you'll fight that uh, utilizing your cards, which are going to be your value here. If you don't have initiative in combat, instead of just choosing one of the three stats and having more and winning, you'll actually have to go through two steps. Step one is movement, which is you'll spend an, an, a certain amount of movement to beat the opponent's broadsides. If you have equal to or more, you don't take damage and you move to the next step. If you have half or more, then you'll actually take a damage um, and you'll move to the next step. And if you have less than half, then you're going to be captured. You will die. Basically, you have to respawn at the next round. When you defeat them with movement uh, versus their broadside by either half or fully, you're going to move on to the next step, which is close quarters combat. And you're going to have to add any from the broadside, any bonuses from the broadside that you didn't remove onto the close quarters. So for instance, if I spend eight movement, my opponent has 12 broadside, that means they're going to have four up on me, but I at least passed half, so I don't get captured. They'll put that four into the 11 close quarters, making it 15. And from there, I'm going to have to come up with 15 close quarters combat in order to defeat them. And if I can, I will simply remove that token, gain the benefits, otherwise captured. So the only way you're taking damage in this game is if you are failing to get to at least halfway um, with the broadside, we use utilizing movement. Otherwise, you just simply will get captured in the game. Additionally, too, some of these markers are going to have initiative. Initiative is going to make you draw a card from this tidings deck and check the bottom, bottom portion. This will tell you what happens for initiative. In this case here, it will say that you get double your broadside value, or it might say that your opponent gains initiative as opposed to you. So any modifiers can change the game in either your favor or not your favor. And that's the main action for the game is combat. There are a few more though. The next one is move. You basically can spend your movement as opposed to uh, not having an initiative, having to use, use uh, mo movement for your, the broadside. You actually just spend, I'm gonna spend three of my six, move my pirate ship three spaces. And you'll simply move from one space to the next, which costs you one movement. There are certain spaces on the board which will cost you more, which are indicated by arrows. And you're always able to move onto coastal areas for free if you're already in that area. You can also scout. You can spend three movement points to reveal a ship in uh, an, all, an, a place adjacent to you, and uh, you can see what their stats are and what they are. If you ever walk onto a space with a ship, you're going to simply reveal it, and if you have to fight it, you will fight it. Otherwise, if it's neutral, you can just move on. You can boast, which means you can select two personal missions, these guys here, and you can pick one. But remember, the negative is at the end of the game, if you did not complete it, you're going to simply lose victory points for the personal mission as opposed to gain them. So be careful with that. Once you've completed one personal mission and the main objective, that's going to trigger the end of the game. So having extra ones that you didn't complete, it's going to cost you. And whenever you complete them, you'll flip them over and gain the tidings, the bonus. Then after that, after boasting, which is simply just giving you more objectives, you can establish a pirate haven. You can always place one on a red uh, skull and crossbones flag, or whenever you defeat a specific location, you're also going to get to place one as well. This is an area where you can rest, actually. And speaking of rest, the next action is rest. You're able to go to a neutral pirate area, meaning one of your friends or your own, to rest. When you rest, you'll reset your ship tokens, you'll add a card from your hand to the discard pile, and you'll remove a wound. The last thing is declaring infamy. It's a little more complicated, but basically what it allows you to do is spend currency in order to gain the best cards in the game, the elite cards, to formalize your deck. And you will simply utilize the cards in your hand, gain the benefits of these cards, discard them. And when you have nothing left to do, or you choose to no longer want to do anything, you can either stop and just discard a card and pass the rest of your turn, or if you have no cards, then you can just pass and the next player will get to go. And they're going to have their four cards. They will take their actions with their four cards along with their base movement, play them, discard, pass. And you'll go back and forth up until somebody runs out of cards. At the end of your turn, you'll always draw back to your main hand size. So at the end of my, my, my last turn, if I were to draw cards and there's either not enough or no cards in my deck, that will symbolize the last turn. And everybody else is gonna get one final turn, in which case you'll go to the cleanup phase. And during the cleanup phase, all players' areas are gonna reset. The first player 
is going to move to the person who has the least swagger, aka victory points, and you will rinse and repeat. The next phase will begin with a tidings phase, meaning you'll take the tidings card from the top and then you'll put it on the bottom, reveal a new one, and check its new round effect, and continue playing the game. Like I said, the game will end when either one of two things happens. Either this victory point tracker has you going all the way around it to 120, or your personal mission and the main mission of the game are complete. The main first mission of the game is to move cargo from one location to another. And it tells you how the actions work with this card, being able to move to a location, go up onto the bay, take the marker and move to Nassau or to Caracas and drop it off in that location, thusly allowing you to finish this to try and end the game a little early with one of your missions. So that's how you play the game, The Pirate Republic. There's quite a few things I'll talk about in the review, such as how your player board works and achievements and bonuses and additional cards, but I think you get the game for the most part. So The Pirate Republic, Africa Gambit, plays like a sandbox pirating adventure, moving your ship from one location to another, completing objectives, defeating ports and forts, as well as the British, or defeating merchants, slavers, treasure gallons. You can pretty much do whatever you want in this game. Every round, a unique aspect is going to flip over from this tidings deck, and you're not gonna use nearly any of these cards for each game you play. So there's always gonna be new things that pop up, whether it is gaining additional movement or combat, either on your side or the enemies, spawning new bad guys, or once around during combat, select a merchant token from any adjacent territory to use as an ally. And then you'll discard the token after combat. So there's ways you can actually gain uh, chips to your fleet. Speaking of that, there's actually ways like moving your ship marker all the way across so you'll gain a merchant ship, which you can eventually gain a pirate ship, which you can flip and utilize as a bonus ship. Actually combat considers like, it's considered like an extra card in your hand that you can only use once a round. A round being when your deck empties, you get to flip it over at the end or whenever you rest. This is also a deck building game. You're gonna be able to gain crew and elite cards that you can utilize into your discard pile, just like any other deck builder. The only difference is I play my turn by discounting my cards, drawing back up, then they do their same thing. We go back and forth and the round ends when everybody, when one player has emptied their deck, meaning they cannot draw enough to equate to a hand size, lest everybody else gets one more turn, in which case you'll reshuffle everything and start again. And you'll play just like that. There's also unique little benefits like your crew command and ship markers, which you can move across and gain unique markers and benefits such as additional cards in your deck, additional movement, your merchant ship, and of course, being able to have movement is important in this game. You start with three, but you can gain up to mainly six. And then there's ways to gain additional with utilizing cards, never more than 10 unless you're in combat. And accomplishments. Whenever you complete an accomplishment, like defeating land tokens or circumnavigating the seas or renouncing a letter of marquee, you're going to be able to gain bonuses that will let you move your stats up. So you're leveling up, gaining benefits, becoming stronger, defeating new and unique enemies, as well as gathering new crew members and utilizing additional captain cards. The seas are going to be rampant, full of different unique treacherous uh, things you have to deal with, as well as trying to kind of create your own little pirate savanna, little, little areas on the board which you can now control with your pirate crew. And you're trying to control as much as you possibly can while completing your objectives. Be careful with personal missions, you can get more of them, but if somebody finishes the game, you'll be left in the dust with a bunch of negative points. However, if, as you complete them, if you gain enough of them and start completing them early, you can actually finish the game on top with additional victory points that you'll calculate into your score at the end of the game. The enemies of the Pirate Republic also change the way the game works too. Defeating a number of merchants is going to spawn different types of ships that are going to come after you, just as well as defeating land is going to spawn pirate hunters that you'll have to deal with, and so on and so forth. There's a number of different ways that as you defeat things, the game will change and mold according to, accordingly to your play style. Also, just like Elden Ring, you don't simply want to go in and fight a fort to begin with. You won't beat them. They're way too difficult. You need to start kind of slower. Start with merchants, weak characters and progress your way. You will have an opportunity to defeat some middle class, even high ranking things based on whatever it is, it is that is in your hand, as well as the different bonuses that you get from the crew and elite decks, but you kind of need to pick and choose your battles wisely. You're not really going up against other pirates in this game, you're other pirate people. In fact, you can actually form companies in this game that will allow you to share the rewards if they're adjacent to you. Uh, you're mainly going to be going up against the board, completing your objectives and satisfying your missions. And if you can do that, you can win the game. Whoever has the most points is the winner. And at 120, the game will end and you'll just check to see your missions and whoever has the most points is the winner. Or you can try and end it early with your missions. 
Speaking of which, the board itself is a beautiful board. It features all the different locations of the Caribbean seas. It illustrates the different pirates and locations that are going to be dealt with with these pirates. And of course, Nassau, the wonderful pirate sanctuary. If you've never seen Black Sails, and that's definitely one to watch. It's a great show, and it represents a lot of these characters. It's not really historically accurate all that much, a little bit, but it is really great, just like this game is as well. I love sandbox games, and this is probably my favorite sandbox pirate adventure I have ever played. It does a great job with its art, its quality. Yes, there is, this is a prototype and there are some issues that I have with it as far as certain cards are a little off, um, certain rules are not exactly clear, but once I've talked to the designer, most of these things are going to get cleared away that I had a big issue with, or not even a big issue with, but like I was concerned and they're like, oh, we already know about that. We're going to fix that. So I'm not even going to cover that. Only thing I'd actually kind of like, my only real suggestion is additional tracks on the game board for like broadsides, close quarters and striking fear. They're like resources just like movement and so when i play cards i like to move them up so i can move them and track them on my turn or during combat when i need them but otherwise the game plays really well it's pretty straightforward and this is a game in which you can kind of do whatever you want become the pirate you want to be and deal with these things as you will level up gaining initiative on new things drawing bonuses increasing your stats and increasing your hand size along the way as you progress you get stronger and you feel stronger and it's great to feel like at the end of the game that thing that fort you wanted to deal with for so long has just been too challenging it's too powerful you've earned your right as a pirate captain you've improved your levels you improved your crew and your captain and now you're able to deal with the fort and you just come in and you stomp them the game combat can be really tight at times it's just in the nick of it or you just fail and you have a lot of control there's not a lot of chance in this game other than this die here this die provides a lot of benefit as to like getting a benefit or having to suffer a penalty. But in general, you feel like you're in control of your own pirate fate in this game, and that's wonderful. Love the miniatures, love the stylation of the game. It is really solid, as long as you don't mind a really big game, a more complex game, whereas how to play is simple, but there's a lot of little intricacies, even some that I didn't talk about, that involve that are involved in this game. And if you don't mind any of that, you like these deep sandboxy games, then definitely check out the Pirate Republic Africa Gambit. It is a solid game, a lot of fun, and every time I play this game, I wanted to go all the way through. I never felt like at the two hour mark, it was time to stop. I felt like I wanted to continue to see where my journey ended. And that's a wonderful sign for a wonderful game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game, The Pirate Republic Africa Gambit by Green Peak Games. If you're interested, there's a link down below that will take you to the Kickstarter campaign. It should be on the last day or so, or maybe it's just at the end where you can go ahead and do the fulfillment for the late pledges to go ahead and pick up yourself a copy. You can also go ahead and check out our website on filtergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And if you think we've earned it, if you watched more than one of our videos before, consider giving us a like, comment, and maybe a subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, the bell notification button to see more of our videos so we can show you more interesting, cool games just like the Pirate Republic. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to delving the Caribbean seas with you next time.